Yeah, maybe we should open to questions, but just before okay. that, I want to mention one thing. Uh, um, before the first Intifada, before 1987, uh, the entire area of Israel, West Bank, Gaza was open. To, uh, there was no barriers of any sort. Anybody could go anywhere. And indeed, uh, Israelis, uh, Palestinians went, of course, but Israelis did come to all the Palestinian areas. And on Saturdays, the residents would be full, uh, people would do their shopping, uh, car repairs, whatever. Mm. Uh, and so, and, and, and there was also a lot of businesses uh, mm. across the area. So, so there was a lot of possibilities of getting to know each other, and people mm. did get to know each other. Mm. So the perception that now exists of separation ah, okay. did, did not exist. And yet it did not resolve the question, mm. uh, because the occupation continued, and settlements were going apace. And, and uh, because people began to see that the land was being taken away, uh. and, uh, th then uh, the first father interrupted, mm. uh, erupted because they uh, had to do something. So it, it, there are objective factors. It, perception mm. is very important, yes. but there yeah. are objective factors, and we should never mm. forget okay. these. I wanted to ask Marina a question, but um, just to pick up on your last point and point out the um, wrong. I think, uh, I don't know if it's the most, it's the Zionist political project in, in that area, I don't know if it's the most successful in history, but my God, it's got to be one of the, the most successful. Um, I think you're absolutely right, the story has been completely hidden from history, um, the Palestinian story. Um, and we could go into the reasons for that, and they are many and, and complex. Um, but it seems to me that um, we've got a duty, I feel I've got a duty, is to try and tell that story because I've discovered it. Mm. The, one of the ways I, the way I discovered it, in fact, was as Taylor Martin just before we, st before we started. Um, I was in a book group a few years ago and we read Linda Grant's book, mm. uh, which I can't actually remember, but her. Which we all enjoyed. The, the mother, first, yeah. Mother. The, her mother mm. goes to Yeah. Mm. Uh, Do you want to can everybody hear? Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. yes. yes. I And and we thoroughly enjoyed it. And and it was only in retrospect that I began to think this has complete. This is put a completely one-sided. Mm. If I remember mm. it rightly, of course, it was a few years ago. Completely one-sided story. Glamorized what who in fact were terrorists, obviously, mm. and, and, and were described as such at the time, Hagenland and Stephanie yeah. and so on. We read Amos Oz's autobiography, mm. and it wasn't until I was reading, I thought, this, there has to be another side to the story. This feels, feels to me, because that's mm. all it was, was a feeling that this is just mm. one side of the story. Mm. So we read, I suggested we read Roger Strangers in the mm. House of Time and all at the Travers. It must have been about three mm. years ago in the mm. festival when, when the bull door struck. So we went to see mm. that. And suddenly, or I suddenly started to mm. see, actually, it was, and, and, you know, and yet I grew up, I can remember the news at the time, 67 mm. war, and, but actually it didn't impact on me mm. as reading these books did. And so it's mm. come back to you. I think, it's I, think so I went through the same process as you, really yes, exactly so. so important that mm. we read almost mm. in an imperceptible way on the other side of the story. Mm. Mm. And that we spend our time telling that side of the story. Mm. That's why, like you, we want to, I want to come and visit. Mm. Because it, there's so much we can tell. And until people start to go mm. and see what's happening mm. with their own eyes, I don't know that we're going to ever stop this political propaganda. Because that's what it is. And of course, propped up in America. Mm. And so how do we combat that terrible propaganda machine, which is so successful, unless we make it be impossible to tell the stories, and, and somehow mm. do that? I mean, it's what a challenge, but... Yeah. Mm. Well, that's right. I, th I thought exactly the same as you, but then I also thought, well, actually, I'm a storyteller, mm. so I'll have a go. I must say that uh, the BBC contributes to the confusion. And although they do better than American, certainly than American uh, television, uh, I realized that their idea of uh, symmetry and, and uh, fairness is to give equal time. Uh, but that's not uh, how it should be, because uh, if you s uh, uh, ask how often they mention the word occupation, it's very, very few, if ever. So they would have what happened in Gaza and then what happened in Sderot. And so you have, okay, 
these people are doing something bad to these people and these people are doing bad, something bad, equally bad to the other side and to hell with both of them. But the context, why is something happening, is not mentioned. Mm -hmm. and we don't have analysis. Yeah. We don't, we don't and, have and, analysis. and it's very simple. One side is occupying the other. Just if you mention that, then okay, that's, that's, the, that's the framework. And then everything else follows. But, but they don't do this. And, and if they do this, they feel they are being biased because they are, they are putting some uh, judgment. What judgment? This is the law, international law. But, but also, Roger, the BBC is very, very scrutinized. And if you remember what happened over the, um, there was some kind of an appeal, wasn't it? And that was broadcast by the BBC in aid of, um, of, of, of Gaza, of, of um, the victims. Wasn't broadcast. There wasn't broadcast, no, because, because somebody in the BBC stopped it. Mm. Um, Actually, when uh, the Glasgow University made a, a study, they found out that Many people did not, most people did not know that Israel was occupying, and many people thought it was the other way around. That yes, yes, yes. And then I thought, you know, how oh, odd, because the BBC reports on the street, mm -hmm. then I realized, but it's not enough to report, it's how you report. Mm -hmm. And I mean, one of the things I discovered um, quite recently, since I last spoke to you, is that in fact the Israeli government takes groups of journalists and, uh, and writers on tours of Israel and Palestine, and they're sort of, you know, they're, they're, they're fact-finding tours, and they often take people who are a little bit oppositional or, or who are critical, and they show them, you know, from our point of view, maybe Palestinians need to, need to do that sort of thing as well, because I, I stumbled into it by chance, really, and maybe it, it, it is, um, it is something that needs to be done in a more concerted, uh, in a more concerted way. I have to say that that that, that my visit, which was very short, completely opened my eyes and changed my perception. I'd gone along thinking, okay, you know, fine, Israel wants a homeland, don't see the problem with that really. I mean, okay, you know, um, so, so long as they're nice to everybody else, um, you know. I, I, I really didn't see what the problem was. And it, it, it took me to go there um, to see. And the, and the funny thing was, it wasn't actually what I saw in Ramallah, it was speaking to the Israelis themselves, and it was their ignorance which shocked me so much. Um, that you know that it isn't just that we're, we're um, biased and victims of propaganda, but but actually that society is being created in which young Israelis don't have this knowledge either. Mm -hmm. I think